This is Jeremy Clark of JeremyBytes.com, and today we'll be looking at the anatomy of a lambda expression. Lambda expressions can be confusing the first time we walk up to them, just because there are a lot of syntactic variations that make for very compact code. But once we understand what a lambda expression is, which is simply an anonymous function, we can use that to our advantage to create some very compact and elegant code. Now where do we usually find lambda expressions? We find them in link, language integrated query. Here we can see we have this where statement and we're comparing the first name property to the text from a text box. Just from looking at this, I have a general idea of what's going on, but I'm not exactly sure how all of these pieces fit together. Another place we run into lambdas is with func of t and action of t. These are the built-in delegate types that we have in the .NET framework. As another example, we might run into lambda expressions and callbacks and event handlers. Again, we see some syntax that looks a little odd, and until we actually dig into the anatomy of a lambda expression, it's hard to know exactly what's going on. Well, it turns out that the anatomy of a lambda expression is quite simple. There are just three parts to it. On the left-hand side, we have the parameters. This can be zero, one, or more parameters. Next, we have the equals greater than sign. This is the lambda operator. It's also known as the goes to operator. And then on the right-hand side, we either have an expression or a series of statements that perform some type of work. Here's an example of an expression lambda. On the left-hand side, we have the parameter which is named person and also of type person. Then we have the goes to operator in the middle. And on the right, we have an expression. In this case, it will evaluate to either true or false. Statement lambdas have a similar layout. On the left, we can see the parameters. In this case, we have object sender and event args args. Then we have the goes to operator. And then we have a set of statements enclosed in curly braces. In this case, we're assigning the item source of a list box and also outputting to the console. Now these are both in fairly verbose states right now for lambda expressions. There's a lot of syntactic sugar that we can put on top of this, and that's what usually happens. The first thing that people often do is use single letter parameter names. This makes things much more compact. You can see in our expression lambda, now we just have person p and p dot first name. Now this is just a convention, it's not required. You can name your parameters whatever you want. However, due to the compact nature of lambda expressions, people will often assign the single letter parameter names. Now in addition to this convention, there's also a number of syntactic variations. The first one, probably the most confusing, is known as parameter type inference. This means that the parameter types are usually optional. If the compiler can figure out the types for the parameters, then we don't need to specify them. So in this case, we might have a similar method signature that we had before with an object s, event args e, but we don't actually need to specify the object or event args types because the compiler knows that already. As another variation, if we only have a single parameter, we don't need parentheses around it. This is something that's very common, especially when we're talking about link and some of the lambda expressions that we use there. Also, if we have a statement lambda with just one statement, the curly braces are optional. So you can see that a combination of having single letter parameter names, along with parameter type inference, along with single parameters without parentheses, along with single statements without curly braces, leads to a very, very compact syntax. Finally, there are times when lambda expressions don't have any parameters at all. In those cases, there's just a set of empty parentheses rather than parameters. So now that we've seen the syntactic variations and looked at the anatomy of a lambda expression, let's actually walk through the process of turning a named delegate into an anonymous delegate into a lambda expression. And then we'll use some of these syntactic variations to make it very compact. So here we are in Visual Studio and we have a very simple application already set up. You can see we just have a single button and when we click it, Nothing happens at this point in time. 
let's go ahead and hook at that event handler. Now we're not gonna do it in our XAML, we're actually gonna do it in the code behind. So let's go ahead and see what we need to do here. So we just need to say click me button dot click, and we'll say plus equals. Visual Studio offers to create an event handler for us. Let's go ahead and click tab, and it gives us a chance to rename it. Let's go ahead and keep this name and we'll just hit tab again. So we can see that Visual Studio stubs out an event handler for us. Let's go ahead and fill this in and we'll just put in a message box dot show and we'll say hello world. So now when we run our application and click our button, we see our pop up with hello world. And that should be no surprise. This is a pretty simple application. Now what we have here is known as a named delegate. Click me button underscore click is an event handler, which is a type of delegate, and it has a name, which is click me button underscore click. Now we can turn a named delegate into an anonymous delegate very easily. Now what's an anonymous delegate? Well, it's just a delegate without a name. And the way we create this is by inlining the code. So what I'll do is I'll copy the parameters as well as the method body. So we'll just do control C to copy. Then up here where we have the click me button underscore click, I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna put in the delegate keyword and then I'm going to paste. So what that just did is inline our method. So now we have an anonymous delegate and we can actually delete our named delegate completely. Let's run the application and make sure we get the same results. Okay, so our application is still working as expected. Now we said that Lambda expressions are simply anonymous functions. That means we can turn this anonymous delegate into a Lambda expression very easily. All we need to do is delete the delegate keyword. And in between the parameters and the method body, we'll just add the goes to operator. Now we have a Lambda expression. That's not very hard, is it? Let's go ahead and run our application, make sure that it still works the same. And yep, we still have our hello world pop-up working just as expected. And now we can start to use some of those syntactic variations. So first, single letter parameter name. So let's turn sender into simply S. Event args E is already there, so we're good to go. Next, because of parameter type inference, we don't actually need to type in these parameter types, so we can delete these. Now, one thing that's very important to note is these parameters are still strongly typed. It's just the compiler knows what they are, so we don't have to type it. If we hover over the E, we see it is still of type routed event args. And if we try to use this in our code by saying E dot, we get the types of things we expect to see in routed event args, such as handled, original source, routed event, and source. So this is still strongly typed. Now, since we only have one statement in our statement lambda, that means we can get rid of the curly braces as well. And with that, let's go ahead and get rid of some of this white space. And now we have everything on one line. Let's go ahead and run our application and we'll see it still works exactly the same way as it did before. So, we could have the very verbose named delegate that we started with, or we can use a very compact Lambda expression. And again, our parameters are strongly typed, so we do have object S and routed event args E. Since the compiler can figure out those types, we don't need to put them in explicitly. Since we only have a single statement, we don't need curly braces around the method body. So Lambda expressions offer us a very compact syntax but all it is, is an anonymous function. So that's it for the anatomy of a Lambda expression. For more information, feel free to visit www.jeremybytes.com.